Evidently, we have a pretty good following down at the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office because uh, uh, Deputy Officer Clint Bradshaw called me on the phone and wanted to come out and talk to me. And he came out and told me that other officers were following what we were doing. And I was pleased about that because I used to be a detention officer with the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. And he was very interested in going to Skull Cave, which is on a canyon lake. He organized the entire thing and, and got a pontoon boat and invited several people and 12 of us showed up to go on this trip. And we went all the way up the canyon to where the the cave was located, which was 975 feet. For all intents and purposes, it was a thousand feet up to the top of the cave. Of course, I had to stay in the boat, and another fellow stayed in the boat with me with the drone, Scott Giles, and uh, uh, our cameraman there, Dave, uh, and the rest of the guys all went up to the top, and we managed to get the drone up there and find them and get some drone shots and stuff like that. But this is an episode that I think is just really unusual. And the story will really be told by Marshall Trimble, Arizona's uh, official historian. But Clint will do some introduction work on, on uh, the story. And we'll hear it from, from a man who's been there and knows the entire history. And I've always just been kind of interested in history. And, you know, I've, I've always loved the Old West. Uh, you know, the old cowboy, the old uh, movies and stuff, always just really been fascinated with that stuff. And then, of course, you know, the superstitions and uh, working there and learning about, you know, the Lost Dutchman and um, just all, all the amazing history and story that are that are go on there. So we, we had heard of this Skull Cave. Uh, it's called Skull Cave or Skeleton Cave. I'd seen it on maps. I'd heard about, we'd heard about it. I did a little research on it. About five, six years ago, me and uh, one of our sergeants who also went on this last trip with us, um, attempted to find the cave. We went to the wrong place. We hiked way up on top of a mountain, um, you know, found what, a cave, but we weren't quite sure. So I went back, I did a lot of research on the internet and found some old pictures, found an old uh, news article from um, Arizona Highways, where I think back in the 60s, 70s, they had done a an, an, uh, magazine article about, um, about the Skeleton Cave and had pictures of it and, and the area. And from that and from a couple other websites, I was able to figure out we were in the total wrong area and kind of was able to narrow down really where I believe the, the actual cave, where it was that the, the actual battle occurred. Um, back about three years ago, I actually saw some people hiking in that area, you know, and I was down on the lake in our patrol boat and these people looked like they were about this tall up there, but I saw them in that area and so I, I that, also kind of confirmed to me that that's the right area so I, i'd always want to go there when i went back there this winter i you know i the first thing when i got up there is all like i'm going to do that skull cave hike i knew that um, there were several people that might be interested in going you know hadn't hadn't planned on taking a large group but i figured if people wanted to go you know I, i'd be happy to go up there with them um, you know i kind of went out of my way to introduce myself to larry and also to Jesse and just then the idea just kind of came up to just invite them, you know, and just say, hey, if you want to, I'm going to I'm going to do this if you want to come along. I really honestly didn't think anyone would come, <laughs> um, including some of my old friends that I've done some hikes with in the past, including one of our sergeants who uh, who went with us that day. And I just called everyone up and said, hey, I'm doing this. And and then everyone showed up. Uh, for one, I call it the skeleton cave because that's what the old history books say that I've read. Um, skull cave, skeleton cave, oranges, apples, one or the other. I like to call it the skeleton cave because literally there were 76 skeletons there, not just skulls. I mean, it was a cave of bones. Um, and I'd been wanting to get up there for years and years. 
Um, and the opportunity never existed uh, until I met Clint. Uh, and he uh, invited me on a trip up there. And so, uh, of course, I jumped on it. I got to say, Skull Cave has been an interest of mine, or Skeleton Cave, whatever way you want to say it is. It, it's something that I've wanted to find for a long time. Over 20 years ago, when I had a boat, Charlie LeSueur and I went up to Canyon Lake a couple times looking for it. We found some pretty neat caves, but we didn't find the right place. That's why when the, last year when Marshall Trimble told the story of Skull Cave, it burned that fire even more to go find that place. It's just one of those mysteries that I wanted to, to go there and feel the experience and see that part of history. They're going through some scary country because they're in a sharp, uh, uh, steep-sided canyon there. They, uh, they take off their boots and they're wearing moccasins now so they won't make noise and can move quietly through there. Uh, they're creeping up and they still don't know what they're gonna run into and it's dark and uh, if, uh, if it's probably better if, if, you, if it's dark as if you're, if you're looking, you're going to see a thousand foot down to the river if I, if I make a bad step. So they're going along, just creeping along, and, um, and they know they're getting close. And then they see some animals, and then they hear some noise. Uh, they uh, they might have been out, Burke thought they might have been out on a raid and come back, uh, whatever, whatever they were. They were, they, were, they, were uh, they were not posting sentries. They were just having a good time and um, they're, uh, they're ready to go. So you get the, they get them all, they move, they move the troops up and the scouts are all there and they close in on that cave. That cave is really, it's not a cave, it's just more of a, a dome of some kind, impervious dome. Uh, it, it just a cut out of, of a hollow out of a mountain, but it's pretty good sized. And uh, I've been in there, when I went in there, it was by boat. Uh, we came in, uh, a couple of us, and uh, came in there and climbed up some steep cliffs. And then it was a long, long slope um, uh, and uh, up to the cave itself. So there's open areas. Well, that was, that was the way we came in from down below, from the river. But uh, the troops came in from over the top. They were, they were up, up here coming down. And they got, they got down to this area, and then uh, they, they were able to form in front of the cave, and um, uh, they were ready for action. But first, Major Brown um, uh, calls, them, calls on them to surrender. Well, there was just a bunch of defiant cries uh, coming from inside the cave. Of, uh, uh, they were, they'd never been beaten. Uh, there's no reason to think they were gonna get beaten this time. But um, um, firepower is going to be important here. So uh, Brown, Brown, uh, Brown opens fire. And there, at one point in, the, <clears throat> in this fight, they have a, a, a little boy wanders out. They were shooting, and they, actually they were shooting at the roof of the cave, and the bullets were ricocheting down, coming down, you know, just ricocheting bullets flying all over. The, so they were taking casualties in there, and the little boy comes out, he has a little minor wound, and um, He's, uh, uh, he just, poor thing is but, but crying, you know, he's scared. And uh, not he, uh, uh, the uh, scout, he runs up and he grabs the kid and takes him back uh, to safety. And for that, he would later be a, uh, awarded the Medal of Honor. His name is down at the state capitol with the heroes at the hero play, uh, his, uh, engraved on that, on that uh, monument. So um, anyway, there, uh, it's, here comes Captain Burns. He'd been out on patrol, uh, uh, gone up another way, and he was up above. And he, he comes up with his troops now, and um, they're looking right down on the battles down below them. They're up here on the high cliff looking down, and, and uh, he decide, comes up with an ingenious plan. Um, I, I call it uh, uh, the, the hanging chads, I guess. <laughs> um, they take their suspenders off, and they make little harnesses. They, they, they come up with two harnesses and they lower these guys over the edge of the cliff in a harness. You get great visuals on this. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, they, they, they've got pistols. And so they just start shooting, they start shooting. And then, and then they get carried away when the pistols are empty, they, start, they threw them. <laughs> he said, he hauls haul them back up, but he, that gave him an idea. Let's roll boulders down on them now. And they started a young avalanche. 
avalanche, uh, and um, and uh, it just raises havoc. It, it is it has just gone crazy inside that cave, and um, people are hollering and screaming, but um, still defiant. The old history books talk about a death chant that the Yavapais uh, were doing. They would try to escape, and when that wouldn't work, they would get pushed back into the cave by the um, uh, the U.S. Army firing their weapons upon them, uh, and then they would go back to a death chant. Uh, and when you're there and you yell out yourself, you can hear your own echo in those canyons. So you can really imagine this death chant that was going on by those Yavapais, and it is a a kind of a haunting feeling there. Brown had said, "Bring the uh, let your women out, and they'll be safe." And no way they were defiant too so these people were not gonna you know they were they were not going to give in they were brave they were they were fighters and so um the um but uh, after the avalanche there's just nothing but chaos inside and um there are uh, i think they counted the dead when they when soldiers went in they counted the dead and there there had been about uh, 76 76 uh in there and about 57 of them were warriors, so there were several women and children among the dead. And they captured, uh, they had eight, uh, 18, 18 women and children captives was all they wound up with. The battle had started uh, uh, probably about daybreak, uh, when they could see where you were, and it lasted, so it lasted for several hours. And um, by that time, one of the captives said, um, uh, there, are, there are our people all over this canyon, and they're gonna be coming and they were going to be coming for you. So um, uh, Brown and Burns decided we don't even have time to bury the dead here. They just buried the one, one, one uh, uh, scout was killed. That we got, we got to get out of here. And they went back over the top uh, with the captives. It's basically uh, the last battle of the Apache Wars in Arizona. Uh, this is, and, and this is really not even a battle. This was a massacre. Uh, where the army came up there, uh, they had been looking for these Yavapais uh, for a long time and um, surrounded them. Uh, the Yavapais would not give up, they would not uh, come out of that cave, um, and they knew that they would be arrested and taken to a reservation. That's not the life that they wanted. Uh, we have to always remember that the Yavapais, the uh, Apaches, they were here first. And so when, um, let's say we came in, uh, when the first frontiersmen, when the prospectors, the miners, when all of these people came in, they displaced the Yavapais and the Apaches. Uh, and so these Yavapais, these particular Yavapais got displaced from their homes. Uh, and so they resorted to raiding. So, you know, what was their culture? what was their way of life, what was their way of gathering food and trade and all that completely disappeared when the prospectors came in. Uh, they had no resources anymore. They had no home anymore. Their life was on the run. And this cave is where the, the last place that they could actually hide. That was the only place that they had left. And finally, of course, uh, the U.S. Army found them uh, and descended upon them um, and they were not going to give up um, and so this of course turned into the army uh, uh, firing their weapons big caliber lead slugs into that cave those bullets were ricocheting down off the ceiling and everywhere and hitting the people that were in this cave um, and it turned out that it was just a massacre uh, the the Avapais did try to escape. Um, that did not work. Casualties, 76 casualties uh, are dead. Um, that was the most costly to the Indians battle in the entire history of the Indian War, uh, of the uh, Arizona. Uh, because never, not even the Battle of Apache Pass, did the Apaches have any kind of, or, or, or the, I say Apache, they were Yavapai Apache. Uh, and have, have that many casualties as they did there at Salt River Canyon that day. I chose a day. I, you know, tried to, obviously we were gonna do it in the winter time when the weather was good. And I just 
and we were gonna rent a boat and and go out there by boat and I had scouted it out uh, a day or two before on where we could park the boat where would be the best place to go I'd looked at the terrain I'd looked at it on Google Earth kind of had you know because I didn't know exactly how to get the best way to get to the cave you could get to it from the left or from the right I just assumed that the best way was from the right just from looking up there at the cliffs and scouting it out uh, a few weeks prior I had walked up a little bit I walked about a third of the way up uh, just to kind of scout it out and to see how difficult it was going to be and uh, so I, I kind of had an idea of the path I wanted to take so we showed up that day, um, we got on the boat, um, two of my friends, two of my sons, Shane and Weston, um, came with us. Um, there was Larry, yourself, and uh, Dave, and your son, and, and Jesse. And we just went out there and, and uh, parked the boat and started making our way up. And you know, it, it, it was difficult. It's a difficult climb. It's steep. There's no trail. You know, we didn't know the exact path. We were constantly kind of on the way up saying, do you think this is the best way or trying to read the terrain, you know, and then, and, and then just having an amazing amount of respect for the Native Americans that lived in that country. To think that they went up and down that constantly and that they lived there was just amazing because it is difficult to walk and it is steep and it's and it's rugged and there's cactus and there's slick shell rock and and so so it was difficult so we just made our way back up there it took us about an hour and a half uh, to get to get to the cave I was kind of in the head of the group you know and I was trying to kind of make wait and make sure everyone you know I didn't want to leave anyone behind and and you know we were all kind of going at our own pace apparently based on what I've been told it was about a mile uh, like a mile and a half but you know you, that sounds not like a that bad of a hike but when you're like no trail and you're going up like rock base it was rough uh, my brother totally like tore up his like the bottom side of his pants um, I was wearing like jeans or something like that so I was fine but um we definitely, there was a few times where, you know, you slipped, or there was a lot of slipping and stuff like that, a lot of loose rocks. Uh, there was one point where I fell on my side, which kind of hurt, but I was all right. Um, but yeah, it was, it was hard, but I mean, it's, yeah, it was, it was hard, but it was worth it, I would say. From the lake to the cave is 900 feet in elevation up. There's no trail, it's straight up. There's cactus. Um, everybody on that trip uh, fell multiple times. We got cactus in it, and it, it's this is not a beginner hike to get up there, uh, and that's kind of good in a way because it keeps it away from the masses of people visiting there. I think that that's an important um, thing about it. it. It's the in the the Yavapais were there to stay hidden. That was their fortress away from. Uh, the United States Army, uh, and it's still today, it's kind of that way, uh, where it's still hidden, it's very hard to get to. Uh, you cannot see this cave from uh, the lake. You can't see it from anywhere. You just got to know that it's there. Uh, and it's an hour and a half hike up there, 900 feet in elevation, um, straight up. Um, and you don't see it until you get there. The number one thing I remember about the hike was how hard it was. I was impressed that anyone in any time would take the trouble to go over that rugged terrain, the steepness of the terrain, the brush that covered the ground, almost every inch of it made it seem an unreasonable trip to make. Uh, it was worth the trip though. Uh, the hike was difficult, but being there in the cave was a pretty neat feeling, uh, just knowing the history behind that particular location. Uh, if I had been holed up in that cave, I would have felt pretty safe after the trouble it took to get there, but um, not so. And I knew that it was difficult. I knew it, there's no trail, that it's just 
pretty much bushwhacking, uh, you know, up the side of a mountain. And, um, uh, but, you know, just based on the history and the story of it. Uh, and then, of course, I, you know, I, I watched, um, I'd become a fan of, of this YouTube channel and had watched, I've watched all your videos and, and I had watched the one about the Skull Cave and that just increased my curiosity and my desire to want to do it even more. But when I got close to the cave, I couldn't help it. I just, I, I just couldn't help but kind of jump ahead. And, and as I came around that bend and kind of came to that cave, man, the hair just stood up on the back of my neck and you knew you were some place that something significantly had happened and you kind of felt definitely a surreal kind of sacred thing um, or feeling uh, about being there and so we all we all got up to the cave and we all kind of looked around a little bit uh, we saw some bone fragments there are there is some graffiti up there uh, from people from a long time ago and not so long ago that have you know, kind of put their name on the cave. We saw some spots uh, actually in some of the smooth rock where you you kind of uh, felt or looked or appeared to be like that could have been a bullet strike where one of the army's bullets would have hit as they were hailing the, the uh, cave with bullets and ricocheting the bullets down on the Native Americans. So, uh, yeah, and it was it was just, it was a fun experience. I was amazed because Clint was, you know, walking around and he saw something sticking out of the sand and he picked it up and lo and behold, there was a, a vertebrae. So we quickly, quickly covered it back up and put it back into place, didn't want to disturb it, but that is the place. We knew we were there. And on top of that, Jesse and, and Clint re recreated the original photos from way back in the early 1900s that you see in the in the articles and the magazines about it. On the hike, I took uh, some old historic photos uh, that were taken in the early 1900s of this cave. Uh, and these photos, the skeletons are still there uh, in early 1900s. Um, and the men that were there at that time that took those photos, um, they staged these photos. Um, and from that, um, you can see exactly the way the cave is. You can see all the ledges and the, the so different the shapes of the rocks and how the lighting is. Just, just uh, and so by taking those old guess. photos okay. uh, and, and looking at it today and photographing it today, you can 100% without a doubt know that you're in the same exact spot and standing exactly uh, where those guys were that took those photos in the early 1900s. And that really let us know that we were in the actual skeleton cave. We were in the place where the actual battle had taken place. And that was, that was, uh, it, it was a neat feeling to know that, you know, we had, we had found the right place. Um, but also it was, it was very kind of surreal to realize that so many people had died in that location. We had also found a news article that said in, around the 1930s, I think it was 1933, that the Maricopa Sheriff uh, had assisted several, um, some, uh, some Native Americans from the Yavapai tribe uh, to collect the bones that were still in the cave and then they interned them on the Fort McDowell uh, in, uh, reservation. And, and so, you know, that kind of incorporated some history with, with Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. You know, for me, it was, it was an amazing experience because number one, you, it's difficult. And you know, not a whole lot of people have been up there um, enough, but you know, the, but it's kind of like to see it, you have to make a sacrifice to literally climb up a, a super steep mountain. And yeah, my two sons came along with me. That that was that was very significant, um, you know. And they both their 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 takeaway from it was, yeah, it was extremely hard, <laughs> and and difficult. But you know, it was. Uh, I think they would say it was worth it 
Um, for me, it's just, it's fun to say I've, you know, been to a, a historically significant place. Um, and, you know, that, that not a lot of people have had the, the privilege to be at. And in a way, I hope that this honors the memory of the, the people that died there. It definitely felt like I was in a very important place. Um, I didn't want to like very much like, you know, don't do anything disrespectful. It's very like, you know, sensitive place and you know, you got to treat it with respect. Uh, there were about eight of us together in the hike up and most of us didn't know each other. It was eight complete strangers that either had one mutual friend or a mutual friend of a friend uh, that we went up together with. And that kind of made the hike even more memorable to come together with these complete strangers and do something that we all recognize pretty quickly like wow this is really difficult uh, making sure we didn't lose track of anyone and just coming together because we all wanted to make it we all wanted to see the cave for ourselves and that was pretty cool so you know marshall tremble tells a really amazing story but then to actually hear that story in person when we recorded it and then to actually be in that cave brought me a sense of reverence it's hard to imagine without being there. That is, that is a sacred place. I don't care what anybody says. That was the last battle of the Apache Wars, according to Marshall Tremble. And you can feel something there. And for all of us to be there, a lot of us didn't know each other very well. But we got to know each other real well because that is one of the most difficult hikes I think I've ever done. And we got to know each other. We watched over each other, climb up that hill. And I can't, we kept over the next ridge, over the next ridge, you know how that goes. Finally we got there and just to see that cave was, was amazing. Yeah, and I remember thinking, um, this is really hallowed ground. Oh, yeah. And I knew it would be to the Avapai, and it should be to really, uh, should be to anybody because um, of, of what happened there. And people trash, would trash, you know, drop, just trash in the place. And, uh, it's so maddening to go out there and see that and just think, you know, you should, you should take your hat off when you come here and like you do the Alamo. You know, in Arizona, there is only so many places like this that are that important to Arizona history. This is one of them. Um, and so there are still um, remnants of those Yavapais in that cave. And you can see that for yourself. Um, and it is something that uh, it's nice to visit uh, during the daytime. I would never go there at night and myself, of course, um, just out of respect. Just go there, spend a little bit of time and get out of there. And for myself, I would not want to see that cave getting run over with people. Uh, it is uh, still today, even though um, uh, the Yavapai skeletons, their bones have mostly been taken out of there uh, and uh, reburied um, at Fort McDowell. Uh, there are still lots of artifacts in the ground there. Uh, there's not been an archaeological study or dig there done. Uh, and it is a very sensitive place, let's put it that way, uh, archaeologically wise and historically wise, and also to the Yavapais today. Yes, indeed. Skull Cave, just another history and mystery of the Superstition Mountains. Thank you for watching this episode of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains. 